So, you know, Bernie, I don't know if you've had some bad experiences and you've seen some really bad padded BPOs, but um, there are some BPO agents that do try to do it in such a way that it's a realistic value for, for it being a good 30 to 60 day turn. And let's talk about the ones that have a potential ulterior motive, and that is yeah. a listing. Tell, tell, comment on, on that in regards to Well, it was kind of funny. People. When you first, uh, you and I first talked one day, you were talking about um, valuing the BPO high in the hopes that it would actually end up in foreclosure and they would get the REO listing. Right. She's, she's speaking of the BPO agent who may have an interest in, if, if, if they brought in a BPO at a figure that they may be able to comp out and justify, but they didn't really think it'd sell at, they stand to potentially get the listing once the home is foreclosed. Okay. And, it, and it was funny because when you said that to me, I don't know if you remember my reaction, I was like, what? I, that had never crossed my mind. I thought more in terms of I would comp the house at what I would want to get the listing at, mm -hmm. which would be an aggressive price that I could move it within 30 days. Nate, we're so honest. We've got, we've got, we've got, we've got Miss Honest BPO agent in here. No, the, I, I just <laughs> never thought that way. I was like, wow, that, I never thought of it that way. I thought I, that I'm going to put it where I would want to get it. Yeah. My comment on this is when you're speaking with a BPO agent in casual conversation, find out, you know, do, do you do a lot of, B, you know, I mean, and you can do it without clubbing them over the head. Do you get, you know, do you do, do you get a lot of BPO, do you get a lot of REO listings, you know, um, and you're just gathering information because if your, uh, if your BPO comes back jacked up and you do have supporting comps that you can validate, that may be something that you need to explain to your mitigator. Hey. I was talking to this BPO agent, and they said that not only do they do BPOs, but if the property goes to foreclosure, they stand a chance of, of getting the listing. So there's there's somewhat of a conflict of interest there, and it's definitely a question that I always, always ask when I'm meeting the BPO agent, and it's something that you need to uh, always, always remember to ask because there's, you know, there's a potential of uh, just as you want comps to come in low, okay, for your own motivation, they want might want comps to come in high for their motivation so you know you, you've got a tug of war here with with bpos it is that way it's always going to be that way um you, you know you're going to get smarter and smarter at, at at getting what you want and bpo agents and clearing houses are going to get smarter and smarter at trying to go their direction and it's just the market it is what it is suck it up go to all your appointments do your best know that two or three of them are out of ten are going to work out in your favor and honestly, in this business, if you're doing it right, that's really a number that should work for you. I mean, if you're, you know, if you if you do a decent, a, an, an average resell that that makes you fifteen to twenty thousand, and you can do that once or twice a month, then that ought to work. You know, I don't I don't know that many people making making that kind of money. So um, one of the things that I want to do is kind of go over some. I don't know what I what, what what do we call these forms here that you have just uh, just bulletins from the clearing houses mm -hmm. okay um, and I'm actually gonna swing around here guys because I, I can I can read uh, and be in front of the camera without having to worry about the camera excuse our, our incredible camera work today I know this has <laughs> been uh, uh, just just beautiful but um, I'm going to cover off on some things for you and I, these are actually gonna get left in my possession. There's nobody's personal information on or anything like that, so be sure that you understand that. But I'm going to try and swing around here and get in here with the crew and kind of read some things to you. And I have no idea if I'm really going to be in the picture because there's nobody behind the camera now. <laughs> but, um, even, even, you got to understand here, my, one of the points that I want to make today is that there's no magic formula, okay? Just as you just heard an answer to a question that a lot of times you'll get red flagged or harassed if, you're, if your value is a whole lot different than the listing price, okay? I've got, I've got something here from a, a clearinghouse that's, that says, don't put much weight on the current list price or days on the market if the subject is a short sale. It can't be trusted that the property has been properly exposed to the market. Instead, let your comps dictate the subject value, okay? That might be the case 
for this clearinghouse, but another clearinghouse, she might get a bad grade for following that particular That's exactly right. particular rule, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. So, just as you, just as an investor, you're working to influence this. The clearinghouses are working to influence things as well, and they all have different requirements and different uh, needs, I guess you sort of want, you should say. Um, another thing that I'll read to you is, and, and this has always been a, a very, very challenging for me to understand, is a lot of clearinghouses will try and dictate that you put very, very limited emphasis on REOs. And if this home gets foreclosed on, it's going to end up as exactly that, an REO. Okay, very few people are buying homes at auctions right now. So... Um, where is that at? Y'all hang in there with me for just a second. Um, uh, let's see, let's see. Well, not only that, let's say that it does end up as an REO property or it doesn't, it's competing with REOs. So, uh, that's the reality of the market in most places right now. Yes, and, and, and so even though that's the re reality of the market, you're getting clearing houses putting emphasis on not necessarily you don't use the don't try to minimize the use of those comps even though that's the truth of what's happening in, in, in the marketplace at least where I'm at I mean, we're in Florida folks and unless you've been living on a rock you know that this this in California and Nevada, Nevada and Arizona are probably the four worst markets in the country okay um, so I'll give you something here that talks about valuation type the, the type of valuation requested Okay, can be found in the broker instructions on every VPO under the purpose section. REO comps should not be used in fair market valuations, even in a declining market. In some REO-driven markets, though, there may not be any may not be any fair market sales, or if there are, they may only be selling for REO prices. If you are performing a fair market valuation in this situation, find comps that are in the same condition as a subject, regardless of whether they are REOs or not. Good comments about REO activities should explain why you had to use REO comp. So if you use an REO comp, you gotta like give an explanation mm -hmm. as to why you used it. Not, it's not just as simple as, um, oh, well, you're about to get an REO, Mr. Linder, so let, why don't we compare apples to what your apple's about, about, you're about to get an apple, so why don't we compare those, okay? Um, let's see, let's see. Many customers request a distressed valuation because the loan is at risk or already in delinquency or in default. In this case, REO comps should be used if they are in a subject's neighborhood and comparable in condition and characteristics. Good comments should be made if no or only a few REO comps meet these parameters. Please also consider a downward adjustment on fair market value sold comps to reflect a distressed value. So again, you may have uh, you may have a bank who has asked the clearinghouse to don't give us fair market, give us distressed, give us REO comps. Okay, so you got banks saying, you know, give us REO comps, don't give us REO comps. Mm -hmm. How in the world do you really determine fair market value in this climate? All right, that's the challenge. Um, I think right now fair market is just about what you can get get somebody to buy the property for. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's nothing in, until somebody puts ink on a on a piece of paper and, and is willing to make an offer on a property nowadays. I mean, it's just it's brutal to determine value, and it and it always is. BPO agents and appraisers are in a hot spot. They're in a hot spot when the market was going up. They're in a hot hot seat, I should say, when the market's going down. So um, that's about it for today, guys. I want to thank you so much for all the questions that you submitted. I want to thank, it's, it's so hard for me not to say her name <laughs> since I've known her for so long, but I want to thank our wonderful BPO agent for, for being here with us today, being candid with us. I hope that this has been an incredible learning experience for you. If I could sum it up and give it to you on a platter is, number one, attend all your BPOs, okay? Face the fact that not all of them are going to go your way. Show up like they are. Bring your bring your contract. Bring your comps that you that you that you've pulled that substantiate your your contract. Show up. Know that it's an opinion, but know that the vast majority of it, a lot of it, is personality. It's your personality, mm -hmm. the BPO agent's personality, and and how you treat them. Don't bulldog them and say I got to have this value and and make them feel uncomfortable. Okay, they've got a job to do. You've got a job to do. If you guys can come together um, on something that, that makes sense, where it's, it's a value that's sound 
it can be validated and you can purchase the property at, at something that makes sense for you as an investor then get it done but again it's all opinion opinions are all across the board and it's this is all about personality okay there's no secret ninja tricks that all these you know gurus are talking about you, if you do this if you do that just show up be yourself be comfortable be confident okay go over the go over the comps tell them what the situation is she had just explained it half the time she doesn't know because nobody tells her if it's a short what stage it's in in the short give the details some people will be receptive and there's some that are going to bite your head off okay don't take it personal you'll never see him again all right well maybe but <laughs> chances are you won't but listen god bless thank you guys for watching and uh we'll be coming at you soon probably next week with uh, a bankruptcy video we've got a file in house right now where our seller just declared bankruptcy right before about a week before closing all right so we're going to address with you guys how we've handled that situation